After thermal expansion, the next process we are going to see is thermal conduction. Therm you already know is heat related with it and conduction means to transmit. So the definition would be thermal conduction, it's a process of transfer of heat through a substance without any motion of the substance. To understand it better, let's take a gas burner and a metal rod. You hold one end of the metal rod in the flame and another by your hand. What happens is, at first you begin to feel the warmth. Then after some time it becomes so hot that you cannot hold it anymore. What happens, what is happening here is, the heat from the burner is being transmitted through this rod to and reaches our hand. That's why you feel the hotness. Here, the metal rods will have different molecules, layer of molecules, molecules. So the heat from the burner gets transmitted to the first layer of the molecules, this first layer transmits to the next, then the next one to the next, and finally it reaches our hand. So you could see out here, there is only transfer of heat through the rod, whereas the molecules out here are not moving. So one point to remember is, in the process of conduction, there is no motion of the matter. The matter. There's no motion of the matter. The particles of the substance, the particles of the rod out here, the substance, the rod does not move. Only there is transfer of heat. And heat always flows from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. reason of lower temperature. Now let's take another instance. Suppose you have a pan, a pan of hot milk, pan of hot milk, this is hot milk, very hot milk. Now if you stir this hot milk with the metal spoon, with the metal spoon, what you observe is you can quickly feel the hotness. It quickly becomes hot. Whereas, if you do the same with a wooden spoon, if you do the same with a wooden spoon, this is wooden spoon, wooden spoon, you can keep on stirring the hot milk for a long time without feeling any kind of hotness. So, what we, are, uh, what we are understanding here is, different substances will have different ability to conduct heat. Here you can see metal spoon, it conducts it quickly, and the other one wooden does not. So, substances conduct heat with different ease. So, we have got two types of conductors here. Good conductors of heat, example would be this metal spoon. So, definition is, substances which conduct heat easily easily through them are called good conductors example silver aluminium and all other metals you have uh, you have studied in the lower classes metals are usually very good conductors of heat and electricity and out of the metal silver is the best conductor bad conductors of heat substances which do not conduct heat or conducts poorly are called bad conductors of heat example would be Hood, that wooden spoon and substances which do not conduct heat they are also called insulators they are also called insulators another example of bad conductor of heat is glass uh, suppose if you do this this experiment the same experiment taking a glass rod what you see it you can keep holding the glass rod for a very long time without feeling any kind of hotness there meaning a glass is a bad conductor of heat so in conclusion, we see that different substances conduct heat at different degree. They have different abilities for conduction of heat through them. So to compare this property of substances, which we have got a term called thermal conductivity. The term is thermal conductivity. For this one, let's take a rectangular slab.
let's take a like rectangular slab slab suppose the area the surface area of this slab is a surface area is a the thickness of this slab is x and the heat is being conducted from this face to the other face the back one and the temperature difference okay there should be temperature difference so out here the temperature let it be theta 1 and the temperature at the back is theta 2 and you know that heat flows from a region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature so theta 1 has to be obviously has to be higher so here theta 1 is greater than theta 2 theta 1 is the temperature on this face theta 2 is the temperature on the back face and uh, suppose let's consider we have got Q amount of heat amount of heat Q is the amount of heat flowing from this face to the back face normally so according to the big uh, experiments it is seen that the amount of heat Q is directly proportional to the surface area. Directly proportional to the surface area, meaning if the surface area is larger, amount of heat conducted would be bigger. If the surface area is smaller, the amount of heat conducted would be smaller. So Q is directly proportional to the to A, which is your surface area. Q is directly proportional to theta 1 minus theta 2 q the amount of heat is directly proportional to the difference of temperature between the two faces meaning if the difference of temperature was higher the amount of heat would be higher if it is it were lower then the amount of heat transfer will also be lower um, meaning if theta 1 minus the difference is 100 minus 10 in the first case that difference is 90 and in the second case let's take it's 20 minus 10 you can see out here the difference of the temperature is higher in this case so the amount of heat transfer would be higher whereas out here it's just 10 so the amount of heat passed would also be smaller <clears throat> another thing is Q is directly proportional to time the amount for which it flows Q is inversely proportional inversely proportional to the thickness x is the thickness more the thickness less is the amount of heat passed less is the thickness more is the amount of heat passed this is found out experimentally now we're going to combine all of these combining we have Q A it's directly proportional so it will be in the numerator theta 1 minus theta 2 this is the difference of temperature and T is the time for which the uh, heat flows and the thickness is inversely proportional so we get got amount of heat directly proportional to A theta 1 minus theta 2 T inversely proportional to the thickness in order to remove this proportionality sign and uh, replace it with the equals to sign, we have to insert a constant. So, to remove this, we put the equals to sign and insert a const constant. The constant we are inserting is k. So, we got theta 1 minus theta 2 to 2 t divided by your x. The constant that we have inserted out here is the thermal conductivity or also known as coefficient of thermal conductivity where right out here k is a constant called coefficient e f f e c i e n t of thermal conductivity or simply it's known as thermal conductivity mm -hmm. 
now we are going to define this thermal, the coefficient of thermal conductivity. In order to define this, in terms of the Q, the amount of heat, what we are going to do is, we are going to put the other terms, A, theta1 minus theta2, T, and X, as unity. Meaning, you, we are going to take this, the value, as 1. So, taking... What are the other terms? A. Surface area equals to 1. X, the thickness also equals to 1. It can be in centimeter or meter. X, also 1. The time, 1 second. The difference in the temperature, theta 1 minus theta 2, also 1. Meaning, taking them as unity. Taking these terms, unity, unity means 1, we have Q equals to K. Q equals to K. Now, from here we can define the term coefficient of thermal conductivity. So, how we can define is, uh, taking all of this unity, the coefficient of thermal conductivity is going to be equal to the amount of heat passed. So let's define it properly. The So definition of thermal conductivity or the coefficient of thermal conductivity could be, could be numerically equal to the quantity of heat, numerically equal to the quantity of heat that conducts in unit time, that conducts in unit time normally through the slab of unit length, unit length, and unit area, and also the difference of the temperature between its faces being unity or being one degree. So that is the definition of coefficient of thermal conductivity. And this coefficient of thermal conductivity, K, would be different for different substances. If the value is higher, it means it's a good conductor. If the value is, if the value is lower, it means it's a bad conductor. <clears throat> now, let's see the unit of, let's try to find out the unit of thermal conductivity. Unit of thermal conductivity. In CGS system, CGS, first we'll find in CGS system. Uh, if you arrange this, you're going to get, we had Q equals to K. A theta 1 minus theta 2 by T divided by your X. If you arrange it properly, K becomes K equals to Q. Then this goes in the denominator. This stays in the numerator. X divided by A theta 1 minus theta 2 T. You know the unit of heat in CGS system is your calorie, so you have calorie. Then uh, X is the thickness, so in CGS system it would be in centimeter. Area, it would be in centimeter square. Theta, min, uh, theta 1 minus theta 2 is the temperature, so temperature you can write either in your Kelvin or your uh, Celsius degree. So I'll write degree Celsius out here. Then time second second or you can just write s so uh, when two goes up we'll get calorie centimeter inverse centimeter this one then this goes up becomes so this is a degree inverse then second inverse so this is the unit of thermal conductivity in your cgs system Calorie, centimeter inverse, degrees centigrade inverse, second inverse. In SI system, SI system, SI system, the unit of your uh, heat, it's going to be in joules. Joules, then uh, the centimeter will be meter inverse, your degree Celsius inverse, second inverse, you can just write J, meter inverse, 
second invoice I'm writing it out here and um, suppose if I want to write for Kelvin it's gonna be Kelvin inverse so this is the um, unit in SI system now uh, let's have a look at these two tables you can see out here the values of the thermal conductivity is given and the materials out here are metals and out here non metal if you see the values the metals usually have very high value of thermal conductivity meaning they are very good conductors and non metals out here will have very less value of thermal conductivity meaning they are bad conductors and out here given is for the gases gases are also very poor conductors of uh, heat uh, next term is thermal resistivity now next term is thermal resistivity so, I'll just write it out here. Thermal resistivity. Thermal resistivity is nothing but just the resistance offered by the material to the flow of heat. And it's the reciprocal of your thermal conductivity. Mm. It is the resistance offered by the material to the flow of heat to the flow of heat to it the reciprocal reciprocal of thermal conductivity he is thermal resistivity so our thermal resistivity would be just a reciprocal of thermal conductivity. K is thermal conductivity, thermal resistivity will be equal to 1 by Q, the reciprocal. Okay, with that we complete the chapter. Thank you.